Good morning. My name is Scott Rutherford, Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. Welcome to today's morning call. It is the first day of March. It's a new month. The beauty of a new month, if you're a trader, is everyone starts at zero. That means you get paid for February and you try and figure out how you're going to make your money in March day in, day out, and put it together another month. You know, and if you didn't have a great February, you put it behind you. If you didn't have a great January, you put it behind you and you start putting your best foot forward. So typically with new months, you get some new monthly flows. So that's why yesterday on the recap, I was like, you know what? I don't feel like being short, even though yesterday's action, you know, gave you some clues to maybe be short after failing into Friday's high, after closing on the lows, the weakness in high beta tech, some weakness in the banks, some weakness in the bios. But it's like, you know what? First few days of the month are typically a bit stronger. So I'd rather be in, in wait and see mode. And you do have some green arrows in, in Asia. They absorb the, the, the rate cut and, and you know, Europe is having a decent day. Draghi doesn't speak till the, the 10th, so there's time there. So you know, there, there is some room for the market to technically try and figure out what's next. Um, and I, I did discuss gold, the gold miners yesterday a little bit more. And you know, that's the first thing I have up, I guess, from yesterday's recap. So let's go first into the GLDs. Okay, if you go to... Um, gold okay you know this is the weekly chart of gold which you could see you know you could see how um, you had this first move but why can I get my little line you know you had your first move below this you know descending you know channel here where you had some power you had some power to the upside and now gold has pretty much been sideways wedging for the past I don't know four weeks so with that being said you know some think perhaps we can get a move up to this 125 level, which is the 200 day on the weekly now, before all is said and done. You know, I went over the macro pattern um, of gold, you know, way back when, you know, when it broke technically, when it acted horrendous. Remember when it was riding the A in 21 day all the way up to before the peak? Well, right here is when it broke the A in 21 day. That was your way out. Then it broke key support here around, you know, 150. And since then, it's been in this descending channel. And although the move has been pretty strong so far, you know, it does seem as if you can get an additional move. Okay, and I guess we'll see if that's the case. You know, some think, you know, it can get all the way up to this 130. You know, I'm not a gold bug, I'm not this, I'm not that. I'm just saying technically every now and then when it's trading well, you kind of got to go with it. And at this point, um, you go to the daily chart and you'll see that you know, you do have the flag. It's above the eight day moving average on the daily. It already took back the 200 day and it's been riding the eight day. Yes, they had a little up day. You know, at some point, perhaps it takes out this 120 and goes. Well, it was kind of, you know, um, interesting on my desk yesterday, I was talking to the guys around me because on the week close, I was like, you know what, if it wasn't a new month, I probably would be going out short, right? We broke above the 50 day in the SPX and the spiders and broke back below it. And, you know, um, closing week, Maybe we go out short, but I was like, you know what? I, I don't know what's going to happen. So um, then we thought about gold. I'm like, gold technically looks great. It's above the eight day. It's holding strong. The market was up in the morning and gold was still up. And then the market, you know, got hit into the close and it didn't pull back. So I'm like, you know what? Instead of being short the market, <laughs> let's be long a little gold because, you know, if we're short the market and the, and the futures are up 15 points, we'll be pissed, <laughs> which if people short have to think about what to do today. I'm like, but if we're down, it seems like, you know, the metals are a go-to type of scenario, you know, and if we're up, maybe we don't get hurt. So that was kind of the first time thinking about gold in that way, which, you know, besides, you know, the, the fast, furious move it had, you know, hasn't been thought like that. And when gold is treated as a currency, which it looks like it's starting to be, once again, that's when you get your better moves. So anyway, you know, I just mentioned the S&P. Okay, so you go back to the SPX and you will see you know, you do have this, you know, ascending type channel, which is why some people probably went short overnight because you thought maybe we reversed into this area. You lost a 50 day, but we were still above the ascending channel, still above the eight day, still above the 21 day. And now we're, you know, kind of gapping up. So the question is, you know, how do you deal with today? Um, at this point, um, I don't know if we're going to have like just enough um, buy pressure to get above um, this um, 1962 but that is your new resistance and yesterday we hit as high as 1958 so there is some room we're probably right in here to that spot the, the better scenario would be is like we kind of gap up you know fill the gap a little bit to the downside and then pivot and then maybe 
find a way to get long versus if we just run real quick, you know, there's probably some people caught short here and that'll create a little bit of a pain trade. But all in all, you know, there are still uh, a camp out there thinking we get to the 2000 overthrow. So you got to be a bit careful, you know, um, just blindly shorting because, you know, we had two down days and we're dancing around the 50 day. I tried to show this like, you know, once last year when we broke above, you know, this resistance area, you know, look at this. This looked horrendous too. Huh? One day, two day, closing on the eight day. And then look what happened here. You had a lot of, this almost looks like what could be today. You had a lot of people caught short and then you had a two day move above a prior pivot and then stalled again and then another two day move. And, you know, basically, you know, you had a, another hundred handles above um, the, the, the resistance here. If so, if you missed part one of the move, here was your second half of the move. And a lot of people fought that second half, even though we were above the eight day. So all I'm saying here is we're back above the eight day or above the 21 day. If this is this similar two day move, you know, with the gap up, and we'll see, be a little careful today. That's all I'm saying. Don't just blindly add to your shorts and, and continue to roll it up. You know, the spiders also, um, you know, went above the 50 day here, gave you some follow through on Friday before it was sold down, you know, below the prior pivot. So that could have been your out. And, um, you know, you would close weak. So if you're short, you got to, you know, figure out what you want to do here. But this is now your, your, your spot of resistance. Okay. And I guess, you know, if it gets up there, maybe, Let's see, let me get this off here. I want to give you a little cleaner version. There we go. Let's get this off. Here is, um, you know, here is that, that, that spot. So we'll see if um, today's up open holds. And if it does, you know, just be a little careful just rolling it up. Unless you think that you could just handle being short, which could go on for, you know, a few more days or maybe even till the ECB goes. Who knows? But all I know is we're above the eight day and that, that seems a bit more, you know, constructive than not. Um, you know, the, the Russell failed at the, the 50 day. Um, but again, you got to put it in perspective. You, you had oscillators plus almost 75. You've had a big move from the lows. Last time we started talking about buying the IWM was in here. And then if it were to get above this spot, above this, you know, 102 and you know, that was a good take your profits. Doesn't mean you have to just get short. Okay. Now we'll see, you know, if we turn up and then if this gets reclaimed, if this gets reclaimed, you know, this there's probably and, and the S&P wants to go to 2000. You know, who knows? This this could see a little bit of a bigger move closer to 107 where it broke down from. So we'll see what happened. This was a little red dog reversal yesterday. So some if you got long here, some probably reduced or got out. Some may be short. So now you have to figure out, you know, can we hold up today? Um, the Q's uh, also went to the 50 day and reversed down. So it'll have another chance today to figure out what it wants to do there. Um, definitely a little choppy, not a lot of power, but you know, that's the market that we have. Here was your clean reversal three days up, sold on Friday, a little bit of follow through yesterday. So now see how it deals with this. This spot is um, 104.10 to 104.37. The IBBs have been very weak. Um, that, you know, VRX was uh, part reason of that yesterday, I added a little more emotion, but ultimately this hasn't even gotten above the 21 day. So out of all the sectors, the bios, still one of the weakest ones. So I'm sure some people are short the bios thinking if we open down, it would, you know, continue to the downside, which made sense. But VRX is up a little bit. You know, this is probably up a dollar. So see what happens um, really for this to get downside traction. It's got to get below this pivot right here. But again, it's below the 8 and 21 day. I don't consider this a swing long. It's, it's, and you have to be much more careful than some of the other sectors. If you want to take a quick look at VRX, because I just talked about it. Um, you know, it's up by two bucks because um, Ackman said, you know, everything's going to be cleared up soon. Yeah, right. Or, or whatever. Um, all you know is, you know, chart wise, here is here is the low. Um, the low here is uh, 63.75. It's up two bucks. See if sellers come back and can hit it below if it, and stays below. Maybe there's more acceleration. But at this point, you know, yesterday, you know, the news guy came out and talked about the SEC and um, you actually could have shorted at 70. You know, our news guy is pretty good. And a lot of people say, you know, what could you have seen here, et cetera, et cetera. Look at this first engulfing, you know, outside day. That was your sell signal. And if you didn't use that as your sell signal <laughs> right here. And then if you would have gotten out using your 200 day rule, 200 day rule was at 200. Okay. <laughs> Besides this bear flag here in the, you know, 140 to 180. So lots of ways to use my, you know, methods on how to get out. This one, you lost the 8 and 21 day. And if you didn't want to get out there when it broke the support or 
broke below this pivot or broke below the 200 day this you know you had a few spots so anyway here you are now if you're looking to just press the, the gajonis out of this because you think it's a zero just be a little careful but doesn't mean it's a buy but um, you know psychologically if it does go red and breaks that point I'm sure some more selling comes into the bios the banks haven't really been too special um, hanging around um, you know it's I would say you know, see if they hold up today yesterday they showed a little relative weakness um, I would watch JP Morgan as your indicator there JP Morgan um, still having some problems um, you know this is resistance where it failed at uh, you got your small little uh, reversal trade here that gave you the three-day move triggered below um, that low which was on um, Friday so some people got short some people might even be shorted overnight because of the way it closed it's up a little bit so you know I would say today if you're looking to see if something goes red you know maybe JP Morgan tries and you could you know fade that if it doesn't go red though you know they might catch a lot of the people went short overnight same thing with high beta tech most of high beta tech all closed on the lows there wasn't a lot of volume though so question is will sellers come back and will they have success you know taking the up open selling it for it to go red and go lower if that's the case maybe today's market fails but if they try and sell down these high beta tech names because they closed in the lows and they don't go down you know that's going to help fuel you know the the, the upside so Amazon um, you know it had a little bit of a, a, a red dog reversal yesterday where if you've been riding it to the upside gave you a sell signal to get out it was the first one really to go red so now see what happens today it's up like five bucks maybe if you're shorted overnight short a little bit more versus 564 but if it breaks above this I, I would cover if it you know if the futures go up it doesn't go up maybe you add to it and if it were to break below you know yesterday's low of 552 you know you then probably have yourself a good trade you know but at this point it's a new month we'll see if new monthly flows try and go in there or not so here is your you know rising channel you know scenario but um, I would just take a little care same thing with Google Google closed on the lows um, you can look at the chart here too um, not a lot of tr you know traction here at Google Google's been pretty darn lethargic you know here was your oops sorry here is your breakout failure um, which happened on earnings gave you at least a sign to get out of Dodge I was a momentum left these things and now it's been you know rejected at the 736 spot so it did you know try and show some strength yesterday and closed a week so this can be another thing where you know traders might be a little trapped short might try and trade their way out of it but make sure that um, you know you could do that because if it gets above this you know, it can continue but I would say um, take a look take a look there but the way you do it is you see a divergence if all of a sudden the spiders open up around 195 Google opens up just say at um, you know 723 spiders go to 195.70 and Google doesn't move then you short a little Google you know verse that little spot spiders come in a little bit and maybe you, you know you get your way out of it I would say same way for Netflix Netflix also you know tried to be strong in the morning and then gave you another topping tail into the 200 day so it's up today so people are probably either caught short or might have short in the brain but you got to be careful it's still in this you know rising type of channel also like all these things all these things have these like rising bear flag channels which can continue until they don't so anyway um, here is your resistance in Netflix right around this 97.50 same kind of thing if it opens up just say at 97 futures go maybe a short against 97.50 for it to pull in but if it doesn't you know use this as your stop because um, I guess it still could make its way a bit higher if it wants to um, Tesla has been <laughs> very strong um, since that low again look at all these patterns look very similar they have these rising channels that are great until they break and they haven't broken yet you know now it's already back to where it broke down from right around here so you know not a very compelling long but if you've been shorting it since here or here you know you're not doing so well so anyway it's up to and change see got rejected the 50 day last time maybe it happens again if it doesn't and gets reclaimed then your next spot is closer to the 200 day so you have to have a plan um, Apple won a lawsuit um, against that whole infringement thing you know this too has been very kind of erratic um, this broke um, its you know momentum levels here and got below the 200 day there so that was telling you it was weak here is another bear flag giving you continuation to the downside and now you know it's trying to hold this 92 but you know so at this point and you have a, a tight pattern here as well so maybe maybe you know hard to trust <laughs> maybe next time it gets above 98 with any kind of crazy authority it, it could try and see a move to at least a 50 day which is a trade of about a buck 40 
not a lot of skin on the bone. And then if it got really frisky, you know, maybe you can get to there. But at this point, you know, most strength has been sold and see if that continues. You know, yesterday's high is 98.23. There has to be a ton of volume here for this to, you know, stay pent up and go. Maybe they stuck to their guns with this whole fraud backdoor thing. Maybe that'll help, but we, we shall see. Um, in social land, you know, not much to say either. You know, those stocks have been giving you some trades here and there. They usually give you some kind of divergence intraday. You know, Facebook's up probably a buck and change. Um, this too looks a lot like the other high beta tech stocks where you have this rising channel, um, two down days. So it's probably going to open up a little bit. And, um, you know, here's your resistance. So see whether or not the gap up holds. And if it does, these are your outs if you're short. Um, or if you're short overnight because of the weak close, maybe you know, short a little bit more versa and see if you can get out of it. You know, again, Facebook, you know, changes character, you know, unfortunately, you know, or fortunately a few times, you know, a few times throughout the course of the day where, you know, I've tried to short it in the morning where it's the strongest thing can't go down and then all of a sudden the futures go up and it doesn't go up and then it goes down or, or vice versa. So try and look for that, you know, intraday divergences to give you some clues what the next hourly move could be for this or some others. Um, oil's up a bit. You know, yesterday oil was up, but the market still went down. I think the conversation is changing from can oil hold 30 to, you know, will it get to 40? And what does that mean for, you know, the market and maybe some oil stocks? So you look here at the XLE, not acting special. You know, just I guess like everything else, had its two down days. And, you know, now we'll see if, uh, you know, if another pivot or obstacle resistance can get taken out. Um, it's still... Not, you know, again, all these things close in the lows, so we'll see how we hold today. So with all that said, um, yesterday was definitely a weirdish type day where, um, you know, you started off strong and then the afternoon market faded. Um, you, you had some clues during the course of the day with divergences on how to, you know, react to that. Um, and, you know, close below the 50-day, but today we're gapped up 15 handles. So there's probably some traders caught short. Maybe even some traders got out of their longs, and now everyone's figuring out what's next. Can today's gap hold and continue and get that bigger move in the next week or so to 1980 to 220, or does today's gap fail once some of the new monthly flows run out either today or tomorrow, and do we get back below the 50-day and, and then start to see more downside because the economic news has been horrendous? But, you know, that hasn't stopped this market before. So... Let's look for the signals, you know, tune into the radio, tune into the chat. Um, I'll post some charts on Twitter. And again, it's a new month. Green days add up. They pay your bills. Get them together and stay optimistic. Have a good day.